Hello there, welcome back to another episode of World of Tanks and Gany Titan. We have two battles this time. I have a battle on both on the Type 64, the Chinese light tank. And both of them are proper, well, one of them is in proper Africa, the other one is in Mountain Pass. And this one is a rather unusual battle. I decided, that's part of the reason that I showed it to you, I decided to show it to you. It's, um, it's basically what happens when you don't cover all your bases so to speak and we'll see now what I'm talking about so it is tier 6 top tier we're top tier and this is actually an excellent little tank um, it's got a good combination of uh, things I like this tank a lot it doesn't have the best view range but you know eventually you will get the crew up I mean I don't have a particularly skilled crew but they're now reached the point where they're actually getting to the more or less the edge of their detection uh, on the tank. So we come up onto the ridge line and they come out fairly far on the ridge line. Well, not initially, but I didn't get detected, so I came out deeper onto the ridge line and then I got detected when I was halfway across the map and then I got targeted. However, uh, very few shots incoming. Now is the first shot and we spotted an enemy. That's the second shot, I think. So I thought that was unusual. I thought this was kind of odd i'd gotten away with a lot of ground and we've both three other tanks on the ridge line here and they've spotted nobody along the back line the only enemy tanks spotted are on the western side of the map so i thought this is kind of unusual in fact we have one of the mediums looking for looking for uh, detection so i come around again to confirm my hypothesis that there's nobody down in the south eastern quarter of the field and now that i've decided there isn't i'm coming down into the field at this point I should be able to see any artillery or any tanks at the back. In fact, we'll light up the T-34S uh, who will sit there at the back, which is not a great position for a T-34S. And we start putting rounds into him and he's uh, not taking his time shooting back. So, he's shooting rather wildly. So what we have here is we have quite a number of tanks on the western side of the map. One tank at the back of the map in the centre. Nobody else. In, prob in all probability, all the remaining undetected enemy tanks are on the hill. And furthermore, they have we sit no tanks uh, east of the railway, so we're d uh, dominant in the field. We're gonna have overwhelming numbers, and we're also the whole since the enemy are located in one corner of the map, and we've no more or less spotted them. They're going to be picked off because a lot of the guys that are going to be shooting at the enemy tanks are going to be hidden from those enemy tanks. Except for the heavy that's pushing up and just died. So I could go for the hill or I could go for the western side of the uh, map. So I went for the western side of the map because I had no support going for the hill. And what the enemy should have been doing on the hill is coming straight down off the hill through the village. And attacking at the railway to try and just support their... Uh, or allies on the western side of the map where they still have allies otherwise they risk being defeated in detail because the advantage is very strongly on our side not only are we concentrated against their isolated forces but we're operating on the interior lines so we can give supporting fire and reinforcement to threatened flanks much more rapidly than the enemy so i'm going to take out the artillery Yes, we got the final shot off. There's one remaining enemy on this side, the long bomb, and he's not going to last very long because there's multiple tanks closing in his position, and that's the end of that. So a P-43 has appeared on the railway. There's a couple of tanks have driven right up to the northwestern corner of the map, which is a waste again. If you don't spot anybody in the northwestern corner of the map, there's no actual advantage in driving up there. The we were on the other side of the railway, so it's the railway you should be going for. P43 is just well, I think he's it's the kind of thing you see when people give up hope. Uh, they just drive into the middle of enemy tanks and just kind of hope for the best, I guess. Absolution, armor, I'm going to have a tough time penetrating the armor of that thing from any distance really, but especially with the regular ammunition. Oh no, the regular ammunition isn't bad. Damage per round is low enough alright, but it's 
fires fast enough to whittle an enemy down pretty quickly and we're gonna get the Panzer 5-4. Two enemy tanks remaining. A tank destroyer is not being detected and the absolution. So we're going to go down onto the absolution here. The artillery just dropping around him. Now he's killed the Allied tank that was closing in on him. We spotted the tank destroyer up on the hill. He's ducking in behind the sand deal there just to try and avoid and I think artillery nailed him at the end. Lots of ribbons but not necessarily lots of damage to show for it but it's very typical of mid tier battles especially when you're top tier, tier 6 and you're dealing with tier 4 and tier 5 tanks. The damage output per shot isn't very high. However we get a good return for our efforts. We got 4 destroyed, 1300 damage, 1000 assisted damage. Second class mastery, and I think I'm quite happy with the result here. Where do we come? We come second after uh, Bretagne. And an Aerial V39, that's it's not bad going with the Aerial V39. Difficult thing to make work in this kind of circumstances. So that's pretty much an example there of what happens when you don't cover all your front line. So you don't defend all the areas and you leave gaps in the line. Which is something I've noticed has been happening in the last few months. Certainly up until I stopped playing in the middle of November. That the, um, to say the, play, the play was getting more erratic on, on the game. So I was just wondering what the population is uh, like. Was it a different, I suspect we have a different player population than we had a year or two ago. Because the playstyle keeps changing and it because it's actually changing towards the more erratic. I suspect we'll be actually getting younger gamers or something like that. Um, kind of follow the football type play a lot in recent times. So now we're in Mountain Pass with the same tank. Although not top tier at this this particular case, there are higher tier tanks to get in play. Uh, this is a tier 8 game so we're pretty much bottom tier and we're going to initially come up here to this location, not the best because we don't have a uh, great gun depression on this tank. But I want to see what's going on and we have one light tank going up the ice road. Fallen at a considerable distance by a couple of heavies that are still on, barely left the base actually at this point in the game, and we have a couple of tank destroyers lumbering up towards the bridge. Looks like light tanks are going as a medium tank as well, going for them. Fighting there in the area under the bridge or along the frozen lake. I don't think it's necessarily the wisest course of action. Uh, you're very vulnerable. To fire from well, lots of different directions really and the problem is that you have no real escape out of that location. Even if you get away with murdering the opposition inside in the middle of that location, which frequently is the case, particularly if there's a light tank mob uh, where they have a sort of a numerical edge or they have, um, they're against heavier tanks, they can frequently win to get their upper hand, you would say, in the immediate fight. But the problem is that once you're down there, you're either caught between the tanks coming up the, the glacier or the ice road or coming down that way or tanks that are just lining up along the edges of the frozen lake and just shooting down into that uh, location. Now our light tanks are the ones that are outnumbered so they're going to get slaughtered in the near future but then the enemy tanks are going to discover the problem with the location. It looks like our heavies actually have decided they're not actually going further than the edge of the base. Right, well, that's going to make it's going to make the to the advantage of the enemy team so far because the enemy team will have the initial advantage at that rate. They can afford to win in the middle, and essentially, I think I'm probably the only one in a position to shoot at them at the moment because they are down there and they're frozen uh, and they're under the bridge. But they're coming at me one at a time. One of them, the light tanks, has decided to go down and face up. He's gotten a bit of support. There's a heavy and a tank destroyer as well. And the heavy has come off the ridge line and come down to meet them. And the tank destroyer that was helping him out is is gone. 
he's on the wrong side of the um, the wrong side of that rise there up there where the kind of people hide up there it's kind of a useless position a lot of the time unless somebody's actually coming at you but now that the light has discovered the artillery the tank destroyer will probably have some opportunity to um, to do something although the light looks like it has the mobility advantage So I'm gonna go back and give that light tank or that tank destroyer a hand. So it's an iron rain, and yes, the light is running. Batchat Boti is running a riot, but he's probably run out of ammunition at the moment. He we should have been better off vacating the location. And it also looks like one of our tank destroyers in the middle has come down off the bridge and has ran into the enemy artillery and dealt with it. Right, so there's reinforcements coming here. This is going to get very, very tricky very quickly. Because what's going to happen here is we are... Could very well get capped out. If we don't delay the action. We have the numerical advantage. We should win the game. But there are only two of us. We are outnumbered. And we are up against some fairly high tier tanks. And I am rapidly running out of ammunition. And it gives these kind of tanks I got trouble penetrating as well with the armored advantage so Jagdpanther I can penetrate but the FE 4201 is a heavy tank isn't it? And I have problems with that one and I'm not doing a whole lot of damage because I'm just using high explosives I'm down to my last three rounds but I'm also running out of hit points and that is it I am dead however we have managed to delay them to the point well we had a tank in the cap circle but he's decided not to go into the cap circle and he's a heavy tank which is probably not the smartest to move especially since we're only now one tank up so the chances are the tanks that come back to reset the cap will be doing so one at a time Looks like the heavy tank has rethought his, cons his uh, consideration of coming back to help. Yes, the tank destroyer that came off the bridge uh, is actually an AT-15. And has taken a fair punishment already. So, um, on the FE-4201 and the Jagdpanther have managed to kill seven tanks between them. So they're not bad in terms of uh, you know, knowing what they're doing and stuff like that. So there they are. Uh, oh, not, he's got a lot of, not a lot of hit points left. The two of them are determined to go into the cap circle, which is a mistake that I think frequently people make. The one or either of them would have been better off sticking closer to the edge of the ridge line with more cover. So that we've killed one enemy tank, just the Yag Panther left. Now the Yag Panther has enough hit points to take a shot or two from the uh, AT-15. So the AD-15 is trying to angle his armour, come out behind the thing, but he makes the mistake of being a little too close to the rock and um, it causes his gun barrel to elevate and he doesn't get the shot off. So the Yag Panther is trying to turn around to face up to the remaining heavy tank here, the Roger Dodger, who just rams him and finishes him off. But I think we were going to win anyway because we nearly capped out and there was no way he'd beat the cap. With one remaining in tank, even if he'd beaten Roger Dodger. So that was a more conventional battle, but uh, again, we actually did pretty well score wise. 1900 damage. We ran out of ammunition. Didn't get a lot of assisted damage, but we were kind of on our own for a lot of the battle, and we got a first class mastery out of this one. Came number one by experience, so bottom tier tank going number one in a tier eight battle. Roger Dodger. That's a pretty decent score as well. He came in number two. The day 15 was number four, was it? Five. Yes, number five. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please press like, comment, share. It really helps the channel out. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.